If you're using the eyedropper tool and it suddenly stops working, there are five easy ways to troubleshoot the problem here in Photoshop. So let's get into it. Friends, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com where we love to talk about photography and photo editing. And one of the big pains of photo editing is that sometimes tools suddenly stop working. And one of those tools that might not work for you is the eyedropper tool in Photoshop. This tool usually samples a color for you so you can paint that color or fill a layer with that sampled color. But if it isn't doing its job, then it just makes life really difficult. Luckily, just like anything in Photoshop, if something is going wrong, there's usually an easy solution to it. So in this tutorial, you'll learn five easy ways to fix the eyedropper tool if something suddenly isn't working right. So let's hop into the program and see how to fix the problem. So whether you're a graphic designer or a photographer, whatever you do in Photoshop, the eyedropper tool can be used in a lot of different types of editing. And the way I usually use it is with the brush tool so I can sample a color and then paint that color onto an image or something like that. However, for this tutorial, I'm gonna actually be using the eyedropper tool just so that we can really see what's going on. So with the eyedropper tool selected, let's say I want to actually sample one of the colors in this image. So typically what you would have to do is just click and sample somewhere on the image but notice how my eyedropper tool is only sampling white. There's clearly some blues, there's some reds, all that stuff, so why is it sampling the white color? Well, looking over at our layers panel, notice how the layer mask is selected and not the layer thumbnail. If I click on the layer thumbnail, now going back in sampling, this time I'll be able to sample the colors in my image because now it's actually looking at the image and not the layer mask, which was completely white. So if this ever happens to you, just make sure to click on the layer thumbnail and not the layer mask so you can actually sample the colors in your image. Now the next problem you might have is that you aren't actually sampling the colors that you want to be sampling. So to give you an example, I'll create a new layer and then I'll just paint a red streak across here and then I'll go and paint an orange streak on a new layer down here. So let's say I want to now sample these colors. So grab my eyedropper tool. I'll go and click around my image, but this time I only have the orange color sampled everywhere I go. This is a very similar problem to what we had before. And looking at our layer, we don't have a layer mask, so why is it only sampling the one color still? Well, that's because of our sample setting. So with the sample setting here, you can choose what layers your eyedropper tool is actually taking into consideration for color samples. So in this case, since I have the current layer selected, that means it's only gonna select my selected layer. So since I have the orange layer chosen, it's only gonna sample that orange. If I pick the red, it's only gonna sample that red. So what if you wanna sample all of your layers at once? Well then, in that case, just set your sample size to all layers, and to be honest, this is what I usually leave it set to just because it's so much easier. And then that way, no matter what layer I have selected, I can go over the red, I can go over the orange, or I can go over any color in the background, all of which are on different layers, I can still sample those colors. So if you suddenly cannot sample the colors that you're trying to sample, then the sample option is probably what's going on. So I just like to leave it set to all layers like so. Now, if you noticed in that previous example, if I click on the blues, it looks blue, but then when I go to the red, notice how our sampled color, which is the upper color in the ring here, doesn't match that bright, vibrant red of the line. The same thing goes if I go to this orange here. It's kind of a muted orange rather than the bright school bus yellow that we see on the image. And that actually comes down to a problem with the sample size. And in this case, looking at the eyedropper tool, the sample size is set to 101 by 101 average, which basically means Photoshop is taking a 101 pixel average square of all of the colors within that area and then averaging it out to create a new color. So when I click right here, it's gonna sample some of these blues and reds and then of course the yellows and then create a average between all of those colors. So this ends up creating a different color than what you're going for. So to fix this problem, I can set a smaller sample size. So I'll go to three by three, for example, and then now it's gonna change how much is taken into consideration. And then when I click right on that orange, it's gonna pick that perfect matching color. Same with if I go to the red, it's gonna sample that bright red color. Depending on how small of a sample you're trying to get, you can even go to point sample, which is basically gonna sample just a single pixel. So if you are really trying to sample the smallest, tiniest color in your photo, then point sample is gonna be the best way to go. But for most cases, I find that point sample or three by three average tend to do the best job for all of your sampling needs. Now the next problem that you might face, and this is more of a inconvenience more than anything is that when you click and change a color, notice how the color palette up here in the corner is changing colors as I sample. 
but I can't actually see what color is being chosen with that ring around my eyedropper tool. Well, that's because the show sampling ring option is turned off. So that means that the ring is invisible. So if I turn that back on, now that ring becomes visible and just life gets made easy once again. So even if you're using the brush tool, for example, I'll turn this off, grab my brush tool, then hold the alter option to sample. Notice how that sampling ring is still gone. So you have to actually go into your eyedropper tool and then go and check off the show sampling ring for all that stuff to work. Because with the eyedropper tool, that's the only way Way you'll get all of those tool settings available. Now the last problem that you might face is that when you go to sample something it's not actually doing the job that you thought it would. Where are my samples going and what are these little points doing here? If you're just trying to use the basic eyedropper tool then you always have to make sure that you're only using the eyedropper tool and not one of these other options. Although they all have very similar icons so it's easy to make this mistake you want to make sure that the eyedropper tool is selected so then that way you're sampling colors and you're not doing anything else. So this is the main eyedropper tool that you should use and this is another common problem that you might be running into is that you just have accidentally selected a different type of eyedropper so things aren't working exactly like you expected it to. So depending on how you actually use the eyedropper tool in Photoshop you might not be used to all of these settings here because for me I use the brush tool and then I hold alter option to use the eyedropper tool like so so then I can create those quick brush adjustments however within the brush options obviously I don't have any sampling options in the settings bar so like I mentioned before you have to actually go into the eyedropper tool and then change all of these settings make sure everything's in order so if you're running into problems make sure to go straight to the settings bar and then you can get everything sorted out so that is five easy ways to troubleshoot the eyedropper tool in Photoshop. And just like any tool in the program, it's always a silly reason why it suddenly stops working. In this case, all the problems only take seconds to fix and then you'll be back up and running in no time. So if you learned something today, then make sure to hit that like button as it really does make a difference. And also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Anyways, my name is Brendan from BeWellCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.